and then then in uh, <laughs> then even the Wednesday night uh, meeting in Pune, you know, the meeting in uh, Nagar and Aurangabad, and then again Sunday morning here, and then Thursday evening uh, communion service. I mean, it just kept 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 getting better, and that's what I was mentioning in the beginning that the Lord is on his on his work. The Lord is working. He is showing us areas that. So that, that we knew about us, but we we deliberately overlooked it. Because man is born with a sin nature. And that sin nature makes us to overlook our weaknesses and just focus on the weaknesses of others. That's 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 adamic nature. But a Christ-like nature, we always focus on the, me first. When I say me first, it's not that I want everything first. When I say me first, I first look for weaknesses in myself. I first look for that sin nature in me. I'll be harsh on me and merciful on others. Or if I'm a Pharisee, I'll be very merciful on me and I'll be harsh on others. God forbid we get into the spirit, a Pharisaical spirit. And and uh, it's, it's worth contemplating on every message that Brother Sainty gave you. I believe every message was God ordained and God preached and God's breathed. See, the, uh, the scripture says every word of God is God inspired. And whenever God sends his man, he sends his word along with his man. The Lord never sent his man alone. Whenever Jeremiah went, he says, thus saith the Lord. Whenever Isaiah went, he says, thus saith the Lord. The Lord doesn't send his man alone. The Lord sends his word with his man. And the man of God was in our midst. And he was not here alone. He was with God's word. And he gave us the word of God. He, he, uh, some, 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 some statements and some, some things must have been, uh, must have, must be hurting us. And since when, when God deals with sin, it hurts. When it, when it comes close to me, it hurts me. Uh, but that's when I need to take confidence in the word of God and take that help and comfort from the Holy Spirit. That Lord, yes, this is my problem. Help me, God. Help me. And, and there, are, there, are, there are many messages that we, there are many thoughts that, line of thoughts that Brother Sanjay brought that we can keep talking on for the coming services. And we'll keep doing that. We'll keep talking on those lines of thoughts that he gave us. Uh, sometimes he gave us he gave us a wonderful line of thought, like like in the mess one of his messages, he, uh, he he told us that God didn't call us to fix the battle. God called us to be fit for the battle. See, we want our battles to be fixed, but God wants us to be fixed first. God fix me first. The battle will take care of itself. We need to be fixed. Our spirit needs to be fixed. Amen. Our mindset needs to be fixed. Amen. Our our yes. our worldly nature has to be changed into more of godly ways. See, no one's perfect here, including including the pastor, including the elders, including everyone. We are all sinners being saved by grace, even today. We were not just saved once. We are being saved every day. So if Amen. I if I commit a sin, if I commit a uh, if I make a mistake, don't look down on me. Don't look down on me. I'm one of you. But I'm also running this, running this race. I also have a fleshly, fleshy nature. I also have a nature motivated by sin. And we all are the same. But am I getting better? That's the question. Am I getting a little more like Christ? That's the question. Am I, am, I, am, I, am I more forgiving today? Am I more sweeter today? Am I more patient today? Do I have more love for God's people today? Am I more long-suffering today? That's the question we all need to ask ourselves every day. Brother Sidney spoke about forgiveness and bitterness and that's a very important aspect of a Christian life without forgiveness we won't have been here right 
What if God never had to forgive us? We would have been still in sin, still in the world. But God so loved the world that he gave. And with his giving, he forgave. God just didn't give, give, God just didn't give his son, he also gave forgiveness along with his son. And we need to be faithful in forgiving. We may be faithful in our tithes. We may be faithful in our attendance. We may be faithful in our, on, our, on our job. We may be faithful in our relationship to our husband and wife. But are we faithful in forgiving? You need faith to forgive. Just like you need faith to accept your forgiveness from God, you need faith to forgive another child of God. And this is one of the doors that the Satan gets in our life. We spoke about many doors like pride, self-righteousness. And this un the spirit of unforgiveness is an open door that the devil comes in from. And once it gets in one area of our life, very soon we'll be taking control of the other areas of our lives. <coughs> and we don't remember, saints, the enemy, the devil only comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. He never comes to give you peace. He never comes to restore. He never comes to build anything. He comes to take away. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. And he'll destroy me, he'll destroy my marriage, he'll destroy my relationships, he'll destroy my church, he'll destroy everything if he gets inside of me. <coughs> and it's not just one person that the devil affects. If he gets in one member of the family, the whole family suffers. There's a scripture in 2 Corinthians, I would like to talk on this line of thought for a little bit and let's see. <clears throat> now the Lord helps us here in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. But before that, let me give you a little background about this epistle. Uh, in this letter, in the first epistle, in the first letter to the church at Corinth, Paul dealt with serious sins. There were sins going on in that church. People were coming drunk at the Lord's table. They were, going, they were going to law, one against another. See, and there was a very serious sin of a, 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 a son laying with his father's wife. And there were many things going on, and those people were just neglecting. See, the church minister, the church elders need to be so, uh, so uh, sensitive. They need to know which, sin, which sins to deal with and which sins to just leave. You will be dealing with sins which are not, not important. I mean, all sin is sin. I'm talking about which. Some, there are some things that happen that are, that are worth ignoring. But there are some things that has to be dealt with. And Paul was talking about one such sin, about, about the man in 1 Corinthians 5. The people knew what was going on, but no one had the courage to stand against that man. No one had the courage to, to cast that sin out of the church. And here comes in Paul. And he tells that those, those, uh, sometimes, and he, and he takes some hard steps. Sometimes the ministry has to take some hard steps. Some, some 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 sins have to be have to be have to be covered. Like Brother Cindy said, there are two ways we can confront uh, confront this attitude of unforgiveness. Uh, 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 two things that we can do about forgiveness: one is to cover that sin, and the other is to confront it. So there are some sins that we need to cover, and some sins need to be confronted. And you need God's wisdom. Otherwise, it will break the church. You need God's wisdom, and, and Paul had the wisdom of the Lord. He knew which sins to cover and which sins to confront, and he took this sin head on. And he confronted this sin, and he, he saw to it that this man was excommunicated, driven away from the church. Not because he hated that man, he loved that man. Sometimes the ministry takes hard steps against us, you know why? Not because they hate us, they love us. They want our soul to be saved. And wasn't this man saved? Yes or no? Yes. This man was saved. He was thrown out of the church. How will you take it if your minister throws you out of the church? 
Oh, no one can throw me out of the church. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. But you can't just throw anyone out for any reason. There has to be enough, enough wisdom in the man of God to understand. Paul was some man. He was the apostle. He knew what would, what would destroy the church. And this sin would have destroyed the church at Corinth. And he says, throw this man away. And now, in the second episode of Corinth, this man comes back after a year or so, year, year and a half. This man, see, see this man, see Paul's love for this man. Now, when this man comes back, Paul doesn't have a hatred towards this man because this man had repented. See, it's, it's one thing to come to church, it's one thing to repent. Have I repented for the harm that I have done to the church? Have I repented? Have I asked forgiveness from God for hurting the church? Oh, people are not good to me. Oh, he is not good to me. She is not good to me. It doesn't matter what people do. Have you set things right with God first and with the church second? And this man had repented. There's no sin, saints, greater than the grace of God, I'm telling you. And there's no sin powerful than the blood of Jesus. If he says, I have covered your sins, that means all your sins have been covered. But it takes repentance on our part to come under the covering of the blood of Jesus. See, and this man had uh, knew, understood the importance of fellowship. He understood the importance of, 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 of being away from the church. And now he's come back, but the, but the people at Corinth now, from, from they, they, had, they were on two extremes. Earlier, they were, they were on one side, that it's okay, whatever is happening, we'll go to church, we'll have everything done. The elders didn't have enough wisdom there. And now when this man comes back, back they're on this side of the pendulum. Now they are so, so, so uh, pharisaical, you can say, that they don't even want to look at this man. They don't even want to talk to this man. Now this man had repented. Now the people of Corinth had become self-righteous Pharisees and couldn't accept the man even after he had repented and put that sin away from him. And Paul had to write to them again. And now here in 2 Corinthians in chapter 2, Paul is telling them, verse 8 onwards, let's read. He says, Wherefore I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. Verse 7 it says, uh, let's read from verse uh, verse 6. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment. He's talking about a man that was excommunicated from the church. In verse 6 he says, Sufficient to such a man is this punishment, uh, which was inflicted of many. So that, contrary wise, verse 7, you ought rather to forgive him. Forgive him now. If someone's really repented and doesn't have that pride in them and they come to church, what about our brothers and sisters who are not in church today and tomorrow they repent and they come back and they have a sweet spirit? What will you do? Will you keep removing the past? Will you keep just torturing them with their past? You are partnering with the devil if you do that. But Paul says, now contrary wise, you ought to rather forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over much sorrow. Over much sorrow. He says, forgive him, receive him, receive him. And, and here in verse 8, he says, Wherefore I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. Don't just say, I forgive you. There are many people who say, Oh, I forgive you. I have nothing in my heart. But they don't love them. True forgiveness brings love for that person. Without love is the fruit of forgiveness. If you have really forgiven anyone, you love them. That doesn't mean you will be pally pally with them and you will visit them every day. You will ruin that relationship. I am talking about your heart so clean about them you don't have anything. Some people forgive others but when anything bad happens to them they get happy inside. That's not forgiveness. 
When you forgive, that means you release them from the bondages that you have kept them in your heart. You want good to happen to them. You want good to happen to them. You are happy when something good happens to them. Love is the fruit of forgiveness. Even in a marriage, you don't keep bringing up your spouse's past. The spouse must have done something, it's okay. But if he or she has repented from their past, and if they have confessed to you and they say, yes, I know, and I have turned away from that, and you keep on, keep on digging that past, keep on telling him or her how bad he is, how useless he is. You have not forgiven him or her. You are absolutely the agent of Satan himself. And Paul says, when verse 8, wherefore I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. Verse 9, for to this end also did I write that I might be the proof of you, whether you be obedient in all things. Forgiveness is a command, and I need to obey it. It's not a choice. Forgiveness is not a choice. Forgiveness doesn't depend on whether I am being asked forgiveness. Forgiveness is something I have to do irrespective of whether they have asked my forgiveness or not. Very easy to preach, very hard to live. Like presently quoted C.S. Lewis, forgiveness is a very, very good thing unless it comes in your life and you have to forgive someone. Until then, it looks very good. These scriptures look very good. But try forgiving someone who's not even asked you to forgive, who's not even, who doesn't even feel bad that they have hurt you. They don't even feel a remorse. Try forgiving such a people, such a person. And Paul said to verse 10, to whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything to whom I forgive it, for your sakes forgive I it in the presence, in the person of Christ. And now he says verse 11, if you don't forgive, if you don't forgive, lest Satan should get that advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Unforgiveness is something that the devil takes advantage of. The devil can never, never deceive a person with a forgiving spirit. The devil always, always, 100 out of 100 times, deceives a person with an unforgiving spirit. No matter what they have done to you, you have to go ahead and forgive. And don't show that you have done a favor because my forgiveness was a gift. And God didn't show that he's, he's, he's done so much of a favor on me. When God doesn't make a show of forgiveness, why do I make a show, a big show that I have forgiven people? Let's not give the devil an advantage. Let's not be ignorant of his devices. We need to be more careful as Satan the deceiver than Satan as a persecutor. The Satan persecutes the church, yes, but persecution has never harmed the church. But in fact, whenever the church was persecuted, the church grew. Check in the Bible, check even in our times, where we, whichever countries the churches are persecuted, the churches are growing. Persecution has never harmed the church. We need to be more careful as Satan as a deceiver. When the devil, uh, when the people ask Jesus about the sign of the last days in Matthew 24, the first thing he says, take heed that you are not deceived. Deception is the hallmark of the end times and we live in the age of deception. Internet deceives us, newspaper deceives us, the media deceives us, the preachers are deceiving us, the churches are deceiving their members. There's deception all around. The government is deceiving. We live in an age of deception. That just shows that we are living in the last days. And we need to be careful of Satan the deceiver. Because Satan wants us to nurse that grudge. He wants you to always go feel pity about yourself. And self-pity. He wants you to always 
Think about how much they have hurt you, how much they have hurt you. See what they did, see what they did, see what they did. Even if they are doing good, even if they are doing good, you think they are doing evil. What, what did Brother Sandy say that if you have bitterness in your heart, whatever against a person, whatever that person does, you always look at it in a negative way. You will never look at it in a positive way. You will never even go and confirm that this is what I have heard. When you hear something about some person, don't confirm it with the third person. If you are wise, the scripture says, go first privately to that brother and ask. Before we open our mouth and tell ten others, first let us go to that person and confirm whether it is true. And he, Satan likes us nursing a grudge and having an unforgiving attitude towards someone so that he can finally destroy us and not just us but many people that are around us. Hebrews 12, he, uh, Hebrews 12, uh, again Brother Sadi just quoted the scripture in his message and he says Hebrews 12 and verse, uh, where is that, root of bitterness, uh, verse 15, verse 14, it says follow peace with all men and holiness and sanctification. Uh, follow peace <coughs> and and, and then sanctify yourselves. Uh, remove that uh, worldly nature from you. Follow peace and holiness <clears throat> without which no man shall see the Lord. What's the use of being in the kingdom but not being able to see God the Father? <coughs> what about, what's the use living for eternity and not even having a glimpse of God the Father? It says, follow peace with all men and holiness. Verse 15, it says, looking diligently. That means give all attention. Don't be slothful in this area. Don't take, it, uh, don't take this message with a casual attitude. Don't sit here to just pass that one hour of time. But be diligent. He says, looking diligently, lest any man fail the grace of God. When I have an unforgiving spirit, I absolutely fail the grace of God. I don't value the grace of God. I just trample it under my feet. And Paul said, the writer of the book of Hebrews said, lest, lest any man fail the grace of God. And what else? Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and not just you, but thereby many be defiled. Because of one person carrying a grudge or a root of bitterness that one person can influence so many members of You know one person hates somebody and the whole family starts hating that person. And whether that person has not done anything to the family members or because this family member is hating them, if one of your family is hating your neighbor, one of your family member hates your neighbor, the whole family stops talking to that neighbor. See how many are defiled? Because of the root of bitterness in one heart. And Paul is challenging, he is, he is, he is, he is, uh, uh, he is he is making the people aware of the root of bitterness. See, for anything to bear fruit, it has to take root first. There is no fruit without root. And the root of bitterness brings a lot of fruits of unforgiveness. And Paul is saying, cut it before it takes root. Don't wait, don't wait for that root to get deeper and deeper and deeper. The more deeper the root, the more hard it is to get it get out. That's why the best thing is to forgive the moment you are hurt. That's the best. As Brother said, said being of, uh, 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 to be offended is not an option. But staying offended is a choice, whether I want to stay offended. But whether I will be offended or not is not an option. I will be offended by people. I will be offended by my wife. I will be offended by my husband, by the church, by the pastor, by, by whoever, by my boss. To be offended is not a choice. People will offend me. But if I continue to stay offended, that's in my hands, right? So the best thing, 
before it takes root is to kill it before it takes root. Jesus didn't wait for all the nails to get in. While they were nailing him, he said, Father, forgive them. He didn't wait to be resurrected and then, Father, forgive them. He forgave while he was being hurt. That's the mind of Christ. That's the love of Christ. I'm not able to do it right now. You may be. I'm not. And I need to get there. The, Paul warns these people about the root of bitterness. He says, it, just, uh, it won't stay with you. It is spread. Do you want to get closer to a man with COVID? What do you do? You don't even look at that face. You stay away. If someone has a root of bitterness, stay away from them. How much more should we be careful about a man or a woman carrying a root of bitterness? But we, but we sit with them, we talk with them, we have tea with them, give them biscuits. And we don't know that the root is spreading right here. You are contracting bitter, bitter COVID. Just like we can give away cold, we can give away tuberculosis, right? It's a, uh, what do you call it? Contagious. contagious diseases. Bitterness is contagious. Unforgiving spirit is contagious. Very, very, very important. Let's not, let's not, let's not, uh, uh, Let's not make, 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 make bitterness comfortable in us. Let's be forgiving. If you, if you want to save yourself, uh, save yourself from eternal damnation. If you want to really save yourself, saints, from, from, from sicknesses. Learn to forgive. Because a, a gossiper, whoever he or she is, a backbiter, is an agent of Satan himself. You need to keep them away or you will be defiled. Satan is called the accuser of the brethren, isn't it? Where is it? In Revelation. Um, and all over here, but here in Revelation, let me quickly get the scripture in, in the 12th or the 13th chapter. Where can someone find that scripture for me? Where it says, he is the accuser of the brethren that accuses them before the Father day and night. 12 verse 10, thank you. And I heard a loud voice, uh, so and so now it's come salvation, but last part of the verse, Revelation 12 verse 10 part B, it says, for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God, when? One day, two days, one month, one day, it says day and night, day and night. <coughs> Am I partnering with the devil to accuse another child of God? The point is not if you say the right thing or the wrong thing. <clears throat> what do you think? When Satan goes to accuse you before the Father, <clears throat> does Satan say wrong things about you? <clears throat> think about it. Satan knows God knows everything. And God knows what's right and what's wrong. When Satan accuses you and me to the Father, he tells the Father all the wrong things we have done. And he tells the truth. He tells the truth. He tells, what, Father, do you know what joy did today? Do you know what he was doing? Do you know where he was partying? Do you know he was sitting? With which people? Do you know what was man so? Do you know one of your child was sitting and drinking in a bar? That's not a lie. He tells the truth. Satan won't lie before God. He can lie before Adam and Eve and before you and me. But when Satan accuses you and me before God, he accuses us with the right things. I mean, he tells the truth. He never tells God a lie. Because he knows, God knows the truth. And God doesn't say, oh no, you liar. God knew, knows what he is saying is right. And when I accuse, it may be the right thing. It may be the right thing. You may not be exaggerating. You may be not adding your mirchi masala and tadka. You may be saying it the way it is. But it's not.
not right to accuse. If you have anything, you talk to the pastor. Talk to the elders. We'll handle it. Don't start talking with everyone and defile the church and defile other spirits, other men's hearts. Don't do that. Don't, let's not partner with the devil. Let's not partner with the accuser of the brethren. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 verse, verse 12. It says, there, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies. Not just drops of mercies. Not just sprinklers of mercies. It's just bowels of mercies. Kindness. Humbleness of mind. Meekness. Long suffering. Pastor brought a statement about forgiving someone 70 times 7. And he said the same sin. The same sin. 490 times. You have to forgive that person of the same sin. And one day you'll forgive him forever. You won't even remember that sin. That's why we need bowels of mercies. We need, we need, we need long suffering. We need, we need a, a humble person can. It's very easy for a humble man or a woman to forgive one another. But people that have problem with forgiveness are proud people. Proud people can never forgive. That's why it was very hard for the Pharisees to forgive the other sex. They thought they were someone because they were proud. But a humble person can never keep a grudge. He might have it for a day or two, but he'll just take it off. Humility and grudge can't stay together. Pride and grudge are the best partners. I'm making a lot of statements. And it says here, forbearing, verse 13, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. So also do you. Whether, if that person responds, the, if I may have something against a brother who's already repented, and, and he's got things right with God, and he, or, and he has nothing about you, and that person loves God wholeheartedly, God will make even the evil that you do and say to work out for that man's good. God doesn't need you or me or our help to bless anyone or to curse anyone. Let's keep that in mind, very clear. God doesn't need anyone's help to bless anyone or to curse anyone. God can do it on his own. You may do thousands of things against the person who's repented. Not one will work against that person. You know, we don't need to help God in all these things. We just need to obey God's word. That's it. If God's word, even how many times God says forgive, 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 forgive. Somebody put a search and see the word forgive in the Bible is for how many times. Even if God had to say it once, it was a commandment. God doesn't have to say it twice. Only then I'll obey. One scripture is enough. We don't, we don't need to partner with the devil. Since this bitterness has to be overcome. It won't leave you. I'm here to tell you, Brother Sinjo is laboring so hard just to let us know bitterness comes in but never leaves us. We have to take it out and we have to overcome it. It won't leave all of us on one night. Bitterness has to be overcome. And the only way we can overcome bitterness is with love. That's it. Keep loving people. Love God's people. You'll never be bitter against them. Even if you may miss sometimes, Say something against them, it will just strike, strike you right there. No, you don't need to speak all this rubbish. Stop it. They are one of God's children. They belong to the Lord. Stop talking this nonsense. And you know when the devil accuses? 
us before God? Aren't you glad you have an advocate standing right there besides God who says, God forgive them? God forgive them. When the devil is accusing, Jesus says, forgive. And God listens to Jesus. He says, forgive him, son. Forgive him. But will I keep doing that, saints, again and again, just because he is there advocating for me? One day the scripture says he'll come with a sickle in his hand. And the blood of Jesus won't cry for forgiveness anymore. One day the blood of Jesus will cry for justice. Let's not wait. Let's repent. Let's turn when there is time. Let's forgive when we still have an advocate standing right there. Let's overcome bitterness. Let's overcome and since maybe this is a reason for some of our physical sicknesses. An unforgiving spirit, a root of bitterness can bring a lot of sicknesses in our body. And you know what can heal us? Forgiveness can. Try forgiving people, you might be healed in that instant. You won't need any medication, you won't need any surgery, you won't need any doctor. Forgiveness is the best medicine that can heal our sicknesses. Try forgiving people. Stop criticizing people who did wrong to you and spoke evil against you. If you love God, God will make everything work for your good. The scripture says no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. That doesn't mean that a weapon won't come against me. It will come against me. All the weapons that are formed against me will come against me. But not one weapon will prosper. If I have the right spirit. And if I am humble. And if I want God to come inside of me and not the devil. But if I have the devil inside of me, every weapon will prosper against me. Every sickness will overpower me. Every sickness will overpower me. Everything. That weapon doesn't mean just people and guns and bullets. That weapon also means sicknesses and mental stress and torment. You don't know what you bring along with unforgiving and bitterness. We pull a lot many things on us when we are bitter and unforgiving. Oh, Brother Joy, is someone, I don't know if anyone's going to change or not after this message. But I want to change. I want to. I don't care if we are suffering for someone else's mistakes. Yes, sometimes you suffer for someone else's mistakes. But if you love God, and you're really called a friend to His purpose, that thing will work out for your good. And you'll be more Christ-like tomorrow. But if you rest in unforgiveness and bitterness, you will be more like the devil tomorrow. God's way is forgive. One more reason why we have unanswered prayers in our life is because we have an unforgiving spirit in our hearts. A prayer that goes up of an unforgiving heart will never come down with an answer. How can a prayer from a bitter heart smell sweet up in heaven? Can it? Can sweet water come out of a bitter fountain? Then why is God not answering my prayer? My God, I leave this church. It's not going to help you. Leaving that bitterness will help you. Leaving the church is not going to help you. Let's 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 get our minds so mindset right. God's God's way is for you. Man's way is to hold on to a grudge. Oh, all the problem I have in my life is because of my husband. All the problem I have in my life is because of my wife. 
or name it, put, up, put whoever, whichever in-law you want. Mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, sister-in-law, brother-in-law. Put your church, put your pastor there, put brothers and sisters in the church, put whatever name you want. All the profit in life is because of them. That's the ironic nature. You're still in Adam, you're not in Christ. You know what people that are in Adam do? You know what Adam did? He committed a sin and gave his wife. That's what we do. We commit sin and we blame somebody else for our for our for our condition that we are in. Oh, he made me do it, she made me do it. That's what Adam did. He committed a sin and started blaming. You know what Christ did? He accepted the blame of the whole world and he forgave. Not one blame on Jesus that day on the cross was because of him. Every sin that Jesus had that day on the cross was because of you and me. And that was the first time the father turned his face away from Jesus. And Jesus on the cross for the first time didn't cry out, Father, Father. He cried out, Lord, Lord. Every time Jesus looked up, he said, Father. But that day on the cross, your sin and my sin. He couldn't even call his father, Father. He called his father, Lord. Lord, why have you forsaken? What did I do, God? Have you ever said, what did I do, God? There are many times you say, what did I do? Let's stop questioning, what did I do? Let's start obeying. If God says forgive, let's forgive. Obeying is going to get us way ahead in God than holding on to a grudge or a bitterness in our life. People want to be, people want to do things like Christ. Not very many people want to be like Christ. You want to feed the 5,000. You want to feed the 4,000. You want to turn the water to wine. You want to heal the sick. You want to cleanse the lepers. You want to raise the dead. You want to do what Christ did. How many of us today here want to live like Christ lived? You may not even do a single miracle, but you will be acceptable in God's sight. The people, the people that follow the Lamb in Revelation 12, it never said they did things like Christ. No, it just says they followed the Lamb. What did it mean to follow the Lamb? They followed the life of Jesus. They forgave. They didn't have bitter spirit towards anyone. They obeyed God's word. And for them to please God was more important to please any man. The problem with us is that we want to please men. And we don't care if we displease God. If everyone sitting here starts pleasing God today, there will be a revival in this place. And there will be a revival in your homes. There will be revival in the life of your children. Paul said, not as men pleasers. Let's say tell you a story about whom? When you're talking about forgiveness. Which lady? Corrington Boone. Let me tell you about a story of a man called Henry Russo. Henry Russo or Henry Suso. One of, I may not be right on the last name. Henry Suso. And let me let me let me um, help you to get rid of your prejudice. He wasn't a believer, he was a Roman Catholic. You think believers are very good and great? This is one thing we need to stop talking against other denominations and other churches. Let's stop it right now. <coughs> Let's not have bitterness against anybody that has done to us anything from any church or any, any religion. They are doing it because they are blind. Are you blind? If you say you touch my eyes, now I can see. So let's leave them alone. And this man was a Catholic. 
And I can tell you, I've seen a lot of Catholics who live better lives than you and me. That's because we claim to receive the Holy Ghost. Don't tell me you received the Holy Ghost, show it to me by your fruit. Jibber jabber, anybody can do it. Even the devil jibber jabbers. But the devil can't produce the fruit of the Spirit. That's why I like Brother Sandy when he says, Okay, you received the Holy Ghost, good. Let's wait for some time, let's see if some fruit comes out. That's the sign. That's what I wait for, even in my life. Otherwise, I deceive myself, oh, I speak in tongues. The devil can speak in tongues more than you and me. So this man, Henry Suso, used to pray every day, Lord, help me to be like Jesus. Help me to be like Jesus. And he, he was a good man. He was a godly man. Many people hurt him, forgave him alone. I don't know whether he was married and his wife passed away or he didn't marry. But I believe, I think he, was not, he wasn't married, if I remember it right. And he used to live down the street, where you know there are small homes on the street, but very close to each other. It's like a chow, chow. So he used to live there, and one day, all of a sudden, this woman comes to his door, knocks on his door with a small baby in her hand, and says, here is the fruit of your sin. And she creates a big ruckus. Everyone comes out and they start talking, oh, this is what this man does. Now we know he, he claims to be so pious and so godly. This is the true color of that man. This is what that man does outside. And he couldn't say anything. He couldn't say anything to that woman. He took that baby inside. And he prayed, God, what should I do? Help me. You know I didn't do this. You know, God, I didn't do this. You know what God spoke to his heart? God told him, take the blame, suffer, and forgive. What did God say? Let's, let's say it together. What did God say? Take the blame, suffer, and forgive. Don't just take the blame and suffer with bitterness. Take the blame, suffer, but be sweet. Forgive. This is a PhD lesson. This is, don't worry, you won't get this test tomorrow. You are still in kingdom of God. You are still in the first and second standard. But if you really want to be like Jesus, one day you'll have to give tests like this. And that man raised that child up. I don't know whether he was a boy or she was a girl. But after many years, that woman came back. You know that woman who brought this child? She came back in that society. And she was convicted of her sin. And she told everyone that this man did nothing. She was wrong. What if God didn't bring that woman back? He would have still cared for that baby. And he would have got a great, Henry Suso is going to get a great reward in him. Maybe more than you and I, who claim to be believers and speak in tongues. This man died a Roman Catholic. But will God neglect a man like this? And I don't want to serve that God. Take the blame, suffer. And forgive. That's how you overcome bitterness. The only way to overcome bitterness is to take the blame, suffer, and forgive. And the foundation of taking the blame and to suffer and forgive is love. First Corinthians 13. If you can do everything and you don't have love, you are just a tinkling symbol. You may give your body to be burned. You may do a lot of things in the church, a lot of things for the church. You may live your life in the church, you may die in the church, but if you don't love one another, if you don't forgive, if you don't suffer, if you don't get rid of that bitterness, 
a person will forgive and won't even be in church as as you are in the church and won't even do for church as much as you do for the church but because that brother or that sister has a sweet spirit he or she will go far ahead in the kingdom than you and me thank god for a church thank god for a sunday morning i think god speaking to us explicitly in these days there's no other he can't be more clear If you don't believe the words spoken by Brother Sanji and myself today, even if Jesus Abraham said to that man, rich man, even if Moses had to come and tell you won't obey, and I'm telling you, even if Jesus comes personally to you and tells you you won't obey, if you don't obey these words that were spoken, so if Jesus tells me I'll do, He's telling you to do it today. Will you? It's a good beginning if you begin it today. Let's at least begin it today. Let's come back better tomorrow. Let's become a little sweeter next Sunday. Let's become a little more sweeter the next Sunday. Thank God for bringing us here together today. Thank God for our church. Thank you all for being here. Let's continue to remember all the prayer requests. And thank you all once again for For helping and for being here and for doing everything that you did for the rest to send here for praying for them. Thank you all. Bless and you pray one for another. Bless and you pray for all the needs of this church and may the Lord bless you all. Amen and amen. God bless.
we are uplifted in God in such a way that we are strengthened by the Lord's grace and His mercy and His kindness. Again, I am uh, thankful to Pastor uh, Joy and Pastor uh, Senji and Pastor Matisula for uh, teaching us, for bringing us into the uh, correct light of the Lord and giving us a really great and good doctrines as far as the uh, teachings are concerned. I understand, I really take it in uh, such a way that it is really helping us to improve our spirit, our personal life, and our professional status, as well as our standing in society, and also helping our children to uh, become successful and to become, you know, the uh, God knowing people, God fearing people, God loving people, and more disciplined like everybody has told, like some of the small things which, which, which really we need to, you know, uh, look, uh, the we need to think on this thing. But really, this small small thing will help us to improve. Uh, as, I, as I believe that, you know, there is all the scope for improvement in everybody's life. There is only the thing that there is all the room for improvement. So, uh, improvement in our life by means of spirituality, by means of discipline, by means of other social standings and all. So, I am really thankful and I am really grateful to Mara Mahasivarta. He was giving what is required to the uh, people which are there in congregation, which are there around, and you are feeding them right what is required, rather than what they can digest, what is required. You are giving them. Thank you very much. God bless you. I am blessed here. Thank you very much for your Thank you. तुम्ही क्षमा केली तर तुम्ही 
ख्रिस्ताने तुम्हाला क्षमा केले हे तुम्ही मानू शकता हे फक्त अगदी तुमच्या मनात खात्री होऊ शकत आणि जर तुम्ही क्षमा नाही केली तर तुम्ही येशू ख्रिस्ताला स्वीकारलं नाही हे स्पष्ट होत जर मी येशू ख्रिस्ताला स्वीकारलं तर माझ्या मनामध्ये येशू ख्रिस्ताने ज्याप्रमाणे लोकांना क्षमा केली त्याप्रमाणे मी क्षमा केली तर ते एक अगदी म्हणजे शिक्का मारल्यासारखे की येशू ख्रिस्ताला मी स्वीकार केलेले आणि त्यासाठी पाऊ मला वाटतं इथं पाऊल एक छोटस काही वाचन मी इथं वाचू इच्छितो की हे जे संदेश केलेले आहेत या चार पाच दिवसात त्याच्यात पुष्कळ वेळा पडत सेंजेनी हे आपल्याला दाखवून दिलेले आणि हे जे शब्द आलेले हे जे मेसेजेस आलेले खरोखर देवानी हे मेसेजेस या मंडळीच्या भक्कमपणासाठी दिलेले या आपल्या सर्व जे कुटुंब आहेत हे कुटुंब एकमेकात अगदी भक्कम होण्यासाठी आणि ख्रिस्तात अगदी भक्कम होण्यासाठी म्हणून देवानी या माणसाचा उपयोग करून घेतलेला पास्टर्स आपला उपयोग करून घेतलेला आपल्याला ते शब्द दिलेले तुम्ही घरी ह्याच्यावर मनन करा विचार करा आणि खरोखर माझ्यामध्ये तो आत्मा आहे का क्षमा करायचा मी एकमेकावर प्रीती करू शकतो का हे आपण विचारूया इथं मला वाटतं इथं एकवीस करार पत्र चौथा अध्याय आणि पंचवीस पासून आपण वाचूया काही त्याला जास्त वाचून आहे या स्थव लबाडी दूर करून तुम्ही प्रत्येक जण आपल्या शेजाऱ्याची खरे बोला का आपण एकमेकांची लबाडी करायला पाहिजे परंतु खरे बोलूया आणि त्या लबाडीनेच एकमेकात द्वेष निर्माण होतो कारण आम्ही एकमेकाचे आवय आहोत आज तो प्रत्येक जण प्रत्येक कुटुंब एकमेकाचे आवय आहोत वी आर मेंबर्स ऑफ द बॉडी ऑफ क्राइस्ट एकमेकाचे आवय आहोत रागे बरा परंतु पाप करू नका होय राग येत आपण काय ते परफेक्ट झालो नाही पुष्कळ करणार येतो आपल्याला राग येतो पण पाऊल काय म्हणतो रागे भरा पण पाप करू नका त्या रागेत तुम्हाला तो राग जर आतमध्ये ठेवला तर त्याच्याद्वारे खूप काही पाप पाप आपण करू शकतो मग नंतर पुढे म्हणजे तुम्ही आपल्या क्रोधात असता सूर्य मावळू नये हे तर अगदी अगदी कॉमन वचन सगळ्यांना माहिती मग नंतर आणि साहित्यांना ठिकाण घेऊ नका आणि हे जर आपण केलं सूर्य मावळा आणि राग ठेवला तर आपण सायतानाला आपलं अंतकरण ओपन करून देतो दहा आपलं दहा उघड करून देतो ज्यांनी चोरी केली आहे त्यांनी त्यापुढे चोरी केली नका आणि नंतर एकोणतीसाव्या वाचनात कोणताही वाईट शब्द तुमच्या मुखावाटे बाहेर येऊ नये हे फार महत्व आहे आपल्या प्रत्येक आपल्या मंडळीमधले प्रत्येक अवयवाने हे लक्षात ठेवायला पाहिजे की आपल्या आपल्या तोंडातनं कुठलेही वाईट शब्द येऊ नये तर गरज लागेल तसे वृद्धी करण्यास जे काही चांगले ते मात्र तुम्ही बोलावे आपण बोलू शकतो का चांगले जे वृत्ती एकमेकांसाठी वृत्ती होईल किंवा चांगलं होईल परमेश्वराच्या आत्म्यात आपली वाढ होईल परमेश्वराचा गौरव आपण करू शकतो त्यासाठी आपण चांगले शब्द बोलू शकतो का का वाईट शब्द नेहमी वाईट शब्द येणार आपल्या तोंडात नाही बरं त्याच्यासाठी आपल्याला इथं दुसऱ्या ह्याच्यात आपल्याला दिलेले की कॉसिक करू नका चहाणी करू नका लबाड बोलू नका हे सर्व तो ह्याच्यासाठी सांगतो की आपल्या तोंडात नेहमी चांगले शब्द यायला पाहिजे तर गरज असेल तर तुम्ही वृद्धी करा असे की तेणे करून एकमेकांना कृपा प्राप्त व्हावी जर माझ्या चांगल्या शब्दाने कोणाला कृपा प्राप्त होते की ज्याच्याशी मी ज्याच्या ज्याच्याशी मी बोलतो ज्याच्याशी मी संभाषण करतो आणि ते संभाषण एकमेकाची चाहण्या बाबतीत चाहणी नसावी परंतु देवाचे गौरव करण्यासाठी माझे संभाषण असायला पाहिजे माझं बोलणं असायला पाहिजे माझं वागणं असायला पाहिजे आणि मग नंतर तिसरा वर्ष आणि देवाच्या पवित्र आत्म्याला खेद देऊ नका होय प्रण आपण इथं येतो देवाच्या आत्म्याद्वारे येतो देवाच्या आत्म्याने बोलून येतो तर आपण खेद देऊ नये तुम्हा खंडून घेण्याच्या दिवसासाठी त्याच्याकडून तुम्हावर शिक्का केलेला आहे आज आपल्यावर सगळ्यावर देवाचा शिक्का आहे त्याची लेकर म्हणून तर त्याच्या ह्याच्यात आपण राहूया सर्व कडूपणा हे मला वाचत द्यायचं होत सर्व कडूपण व संता व राग व बडबडणे व निंदा ही सर्व दुष्टपणा सुद्धा तुमच्या तुमच्यापासून दूर केली जावी हे सर्व गोष्टी ह्याच्यात आपण कुठं बसतो का कोणाबद्दल कडूपण आहे का 
कोणाबद्दल सत्ताप आहे का कोणाबद्दल राग आहे का कोणाबद्दल आपण बडबडतो का खूप काही होऊ शकते ब्रदर जॉईन यांना सांगितलं की हाऊ मच बी टॉक अगेन्स्ट समबडी किती आपण गॉसिप करतो मग नंतर निंदा ही सर्व दुष्टपणा दुष्टपणा सुद्धा तुमच्यापासून दूर केली जावी यासाठी कोणी आपल्याला ते हे केलेले येशू ख्रिस्तांनी केले मग एकोण एकतीस बत्तीस आहोत आणि तुम्ही एकमेकांशी माझ्या बायबल मध्ये ते अंडरलाईन केले उपकारिक सौम्यतेने उपकारिक आणि कंडवाळू व्हा किती दिवस आपण तो सगळं राग द्वेष मस्त आपल्यामध्ये ठेवणार आहोत नाही प्रेम आपण क्षमा करूया आणि क्षमा केल्यानंतर आपण आपली उपकारता उपकारिक होऊया कन्वाळू होऊया जशी देवानेही ते आठवण करा ते लक्ष देऊन वाचा देवानेही ख्रिस्ता तुमची क्षमा केली आणि हे वाक्य जर माझ्या मनात असेल तर मी देवाला स्वीकार केलेले ख्रिस्ताला माझा ताडणारा स्वीकार केलेला आहे आणि जर मी एकमेकांना क्षमा केली तर माझ्यामध्ये देव पण नाही आणि ख्रिस्त पण नाही तुम्ही फसवता आपल्या स्वतःला हो देवानी मला केले मी ख्रिस्ताला स्वीकारलेले सगळं काय केलेले पण मला माझ्यामध्ये तो क्षमा करण्याच हे नसेल आत्मा नसेल तर मी खासा ख्रिस्त माझ्यामध्ये घेऊ शकतो कारण पुढे म्हणते तुमची क्षमा केली तशी तुम्ही एकमेकांची क्षमा करा करूया आपण क्षमा आणि मला वाटतं पाचव्या अध्यात पहिलं वचन एक असेल यास्त मी तुम्ही प्रिय लेकरांसाठी देवाचे अनुकरणारे अनुकरण करणारे वा आपण करायला पाहिजे फक्त बोलून फक्त संदेश ऐकून आपण राहायला नाही पाहिजे पण आपण अनुकरून करूया जे काय आपल्याला सांगितलं आहे जे काय आपल्याला ऐकवलं गेलेलं आहे ते सर्व आपण अनुकरून करूया आणि ज्याप्रमाणे ख्रिस्तांनीही अम्मा प्रीती केली व देवाला सुगंधाचा सुवास असे आम्हासाठी आपल्याला अर्पण व यज्ञ म्हणून दिले त्याप्रमाणे तुम्ही प्रीतीत चाल हे वचन आपण दहा वेळा वाचूया आणि जर समजा आपल्यामध्ये बदल झाले तर देवाच्या नावाला गौरव असेल आणि मला मला खात्री आहे की हे जे संदेश केलेले आहेत या काही दिवसात हे संदेश जर आपण मनपूर्वक ऐकलं मनपूर्वक त्याच्यावर मनन केलं तो खरोखरच ही मंडळी एक उत्कृष्ट अशी मंडळी होईल एकमेकांसाठी आपण आपलं आपलं सर्व काही सर्वस्व काही देऊ शकतो तर आपण एकमेकावर प्रीती केली हे तर परमेश्वराची उपकारस्तुती असूया परमेश्वराचा गौरव असूया आणि तुमच्या सर्व मदतीमुळं तुमच्या चांगल्या आत्म्यामुळं आपल्याला हे जे मीटिंग्स झाले ते अगदी सक्सेसफुल आणि व्यवस्थित करता आले तर तुमच्या सर्वांचे परत मी पण आभार मानतो कारण सगळ्यांनी चांगला आत्मा दाखवला सगळ्यांनी चांगलं मदत केली आणि ह्याच्यासाठी मी परमेश्वराची उपकारस्तुती करतो 